Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive and you are going to feel so alive when you hear my interview with my awesome guests. So, you know, I talk to women mostly. Most of my clients are women. I'm in the world of women. My, my entrepreneurial friends are women. It's just, you know, I love men. Don't get me wrong, but I just hang out with women most of the time. <laughs> so when I had the opportunity to meet these two very special men from the Fit Mess podcast, uh, they interviewed me on their show. And uh, I just had so much fun. And I really could tell these guys had some real depth and clarity around their own healing journey. I said, you guys got to come on my show. You got to come on my show. So I'm really excited to have them on the show. You're going to love the interview. If you're here at the Heal Your Hunger show for the first time, welcome. So glad you're here. You were in the right place. If you have struggled incessantly with food and weight and are tired, just tired of it. You don't want to do it anymore. Guess what? There is a new and different path you can take. And to me, that is just music to my ears. I'm so happy that we don't have to be on the diet roller coaster ride anymore. That has been my saving grace. I got off the roller coaster ride, got off the jumping on the scale and jumping off the scale a million times a day. I got off of that. Anything having to do with all that mishigash, no more. So if you want to have a new experience with weight loss that doesn't include dieting or crazy exercise programs, you're in the right place. Welcome. Glad you're here. And you're going to hear from some guys who are totally awesome and have their own weight loss story to tell. Um, I want to invite you to be a part of the secret sauce group. This is an amazing, uh, group on Facebook where we talk with each other, communicate, you know, express, um, share wins, celebrate. There's so many good things happening in the secret sauce group, amazing messages and uh, moments of inspiration. So I want to invite you to be with us there. You just go to Facebook and type in the secret sauce to end emotional eating. Okay. On with the show. The cool thing about my guest today is that I was on their show recently and, you know, I do a lot of guesting on other people's podcasts, but it's only once in a while that I'm like, Hey, I don't want these guys on my show. So, um, so they made the cut. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, this would be a cool show to do. So, um, two men who are into health, it's not their, you know, vocation. It's their, you know, it's what they love. It's part of who they are and, and who they've become. And so I just thought their stories would be super interesting for my audience. So welcome, Jeremy and Zach. So glad you guys are here. Thanks yeah, for having thank us. You. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, it's awesome. And I did love being on your show and I love what you guys are doing. And um, I really want to just start with each of you telling your brief journey. I know it's been a long journey, but make it brief. <laughs> so, cause we had a lot of ground to cover. So yeah. kind of what, how did you get into health? Like what was the journey? Yeah, I'll start. Um, my, my journey start, like started all the way back as a baby. I, I was born with a, a heart defect okay. and then all kinds of other issues with a mom who abandoned me and my sister and we couldn't eat anything. I was stealing, stealing from the store when I was five years old. Um, and really just had a very traumatic childhood, which led to um, lots of, of mental health issues, lots of mm. physical health issues, things like that. Um, and it wasn't until I was 25 or so, I really just said, I'm going to change this. This isn't me. The, it, it's got to be different. It, it's got to be better. So I just started running. I started doing things for my mental health. And, you know, it took a couple of decades almost, but... <laughs> It, you know, I'm in a place now where I'm healthier than I've ever been, uh, happier than I've ever been. And now it's time, like my story is to give it back to the world. I, I do as much as I can to help other people get through that journey. So that's as short as I can make it. Well, that's, it was great. It was great. And we'll dig in more and kind of flesh out some of the details um, as we go. So thanks for sharing that, Zach. And I'm so glad 
I'm so glad, right, that you're where you are now. I'm sure you are too. You're probably, I just shared this on a former podcast, but you're probably the best version of yourself right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I'm grateful every day that I'm where I'm at now, but I'm also thankful for my past, right? I, totally. I have to thank it and be happy about the struggles I went through because I wouldn't be where I am today. Amen. 100%. Thank you. Okay, Jeremy, you're up. So my uh, wellness journey anyway, sort of began with uh, some knee pain that I was having some uh, really a ridiculous injury that I had. And uh, the physical therapist I was working with said, you know, if you don't get on a bike, you're going to have uh, knee replacements to look forward to in the future. And that was enough to scare me onto a bike. I bought one that week, started bike commuting. It was about a nine mile ride. And I, I was really, I mean, I enjoyed it more than I probably should have. It was just a really um, peaceful way to commute aside from getting on the bus where the biggest risk is, you know, like getting stabbed or whatever. So I was, uh, I was biking a lot and I was really enjoying how present I had to be in that moment and, and how everything else fell away because if I wasn't focused on the moment, it was going to be really dangerous. And that opened me up to wanting to pursue other ways to find that. And through the therapist that I, that I uh, met, I learned about meditation. I started learning about yoga and really learning more about just being present in the now. And, and that discovery led me to meditation and all sorts of just wellness things that I wanted to explore. And while I was going through all this, I, I met Zach and he was a few years ahead of me on, on this sort of wellness journey that we were ended up being on together. And uh, we just were having these really vulnerable conversations about the fears that we were having, about the things we were trying, about the struggles that we had when we failed. How did and, you say, I think I just missed something. I might have spaced for a second. What, how did you guys meet? I want, I want to know, I want to know that. Really just through uh, parents. We are, we're both okay. parents of kids and our kids are the same age. And so we, uh, we had our wives became friends through mutual friends. And so we Got ended it. up at a breakfast together and, okay, you know, that turned into weekend trips and, and, and that kind of thing. And so, uh, so the more we talked about sort of the, the struggles that we were having, I had already been podcasting for a long time. I got a long career in radio. And Zach was like, you know, why don't we, why don't we turn this into a podcast? This is a conversation that is helping you and it's helping me imagine who we could help by sharing these conversations publicly. And so that sort of opened the door to starting what we've been doing for the last three years. That's awesome. Good for you guys. And, and uh, from one pos podcaster to another, you know, you're, you're, you are making waves, you're doing great stuff. So, um, uh, because this is the heal your hunger show and we do deal with weight issues. One of you, one of you behind the curtain, uh, was obese, right? I think we both qualify, right? Dad? Were you both, both obese? Okay. Well, you yeah, guys didn't right. mention that this is very information, important information when you're on an emotional eating podcast. Okay. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. That's a good point. You know, you, we, uh, it's, it's been such a, a big journey with so many assets. Or, like, or that's, that's a key part to put in there. Okay. So how much overweight were, were each of you? Uh, I, my heaviest, um, so I'm six foot even. And at my heaviest, I was like 297. Wow. I was, and it, it was not muscle. I was eating Oreos and McDonald's and all the bad stuff and not exercising at all. So I was, I was pretty big. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And now for those of you who aren't watching, he is in a normal size body. That's amazing. So good for you. Mostly normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what is normal anyway, really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeremy, how about you? Yeah. My heaviest, I tipped the scales at about 270. And then through uh, some diet and lifestyle changes, I got down at one point to about 210. Then COVID put about 10 more back on. So I've got a little bit of work to do to, to correct course, but, uh, but staying pretty steady where I am now. That's awesome. That's a lot of weight, you guys. That's yeah. so impressive. And what I love about it is you did it the natural way, right? You didn't know, no tricks or gimmicks. Like you, you not only started exercising and eating better, which is the most obvious two things that we do, but the most important thing, in my opinion, is the, the mental, right? The mental and emotional. And it sounds like you guys really tuned in and realize that that's going to be a big part of the journey. So can we talk about that? For of sure. Course. Yeah. 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 So what did you guys do? I mean, we're, you weren't always woke, right? You were <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys were uh, just dudes. And then, you know, but out of necessity, I'm sure you had to go inside and take this more um, 
you know, uh, this journey in, inward to your soul. So how did that, like, what did that look like? Was it just out of sheer pain? Was it therapy? What, what got you kind of starting to wake up to your, your inner self? Well, mine, on, mine is actually more of a, a, it's an interesting story. I, I was, at the time I was almost 300 pounds. I was also smoking cigarettes. I was smoking like two packs a day. Wow. Um, just. Well, you sound like my, my ex and former mentor. That was him as well. That's incredible. Um, and I, I remember I went for my first job interview right after college. Um, and I, I went to college a little bit later than most. And I was 25. And the day of my interview, I was like, I don't want to smell like cigarette smoke. So I put a nicotine patch on and then went to the interview, got the job, started. And my boss looked at me on my very first day and he went, oh, you smoke. I would have never hired you if I knew you smoked. And that was like this light bulb that went off in my head of, well, this is going to hurt my career and my health. Like my health wasn't enough to convince me, but now my career was on the line and my health was on the line. So I quit, I quit smoking hardest thing I ever did and immediately joined a group and started running and weight just started kind of melting off. So that was my moment. Wow. Where everything just started shifting. Wow. I love that. And I just have to tell a funny story. Um, when I first started online dating a couple of years ago, I'd never been on an online dating site before, but after my divorce, that's what I did. And, um, and I remember, and I would always like, um, I thought it was made most, most sense to have like a FaceTime conversation with somebody, which I learned later, you don't do when you're online dating, like that's very like aggressive, <laughs> <laughs> but, but to me, it was just expedient. Like, let's just like, let's cut to the chase here. So I got it and I'm glad I did because I got on this FaceTime call with a guy and the first words out of his mouth, I could tell he was a smoker. Like I just could mm. tell from the, the, the tone, I mean, the, you know, the raspy in his voice. And so I said, you're a smoker, aren't you? And he's, he's like, he felt caught. Like he's going to have that caught look. It's <laughs> like, and I said, well, I don't date smokers you know, and I just said it that bluntly. And then of course he's tries, tries to convince me that he's, he's, he's quit. He just, it was just a short mm -hmm. time. You know, he's, he's back. He's going to quit again. He had quit before. And I just like, I know addiction. Okay. If there's two things I know they're both about addiction. So, so I'm like, yeah, nobody quits for anybody. That's, that's BS. So, I, you know, that was the end of the conversation, but it was, I'm hoping like when you share that story, I was thinking maybe, maybe my directness, maybe that had an impact on him. Hopefully. Yeah, I don't know if it's it did, possible. But, yeah, that's good. I'm glad your boss said that to you. That's amazing. And it's a good story and incredible. So I'm so glad you stopped. What a, what a blessing and, and what a pivot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Started up, it started a journey that at the time I, I, I think back and like pretend to be that guy again. And then I look forward at who I am today. And I'm just like, that guy would be making fun of all of the things that I do now to be, to be happy and healthy. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. That's so true. Like it goes, the, ad, the attitude goes with it, doesn't it? <laughs> the attitude yeah. and the actions that go together. Yeah. How about you, Jeremy? I, on my old podcast, I did. One of my partners was way more into like kind of woo woo stuff. And I, I mean, that was part of the show was making fun of her, of her woo woo ness. Okay. Uh, and now it's just so funny. Cause I look back and like, there's all these things that I literally made fun of her for that I do. And it is, it's, there's just this <laughs> yeah. mindset shift that has to happen to, to try that stuff. Isn't that the truth? Be careful what you, what you, <laughs> what you tease. Right. So, yes, yes. yeah. So how about for you? How did that, how did it happen? Uh, you know, I think, I think mine kind of went in reverse. It was, uh, I was just kind of tired of feeling the way I felt and looking the way I looked and, and I didn't know what else to do. And, and I'd been having enough conversations with Zach and, and, you know, I was biking and that was, that was helping a little bit, but not moving the needle in the way that I wanted to. And there was one weekend we went camping together and we were sitting around the campfire one morning and he mentioned, sorry, there's a lot of noise in the background. Uh, we're camping and, and we're sitting around the campfire and he mentioned that he was having a lot of success on the keto diet. And it was one of many things over the years that I've said to him, you know, that's crazy. That's not for me. That's too far out there, <laughs> whatever. But the more, you know, I went home with that sort of in the back of my mind and I was doing some, some research and I was just like, you know, I don't have to go full keto. First of all, I'm a vegetarian, so it's a very hard thing to do. <laughs> um, but I did some research and I was like, what could I cut? What could I, what could I do to get close to doing a keto diet and, and have some of those same results? And I did, I literally, I went into a diet plan of just 
cut your carbs to 100 grams a day. Like, like literally nothing else. If you do that, just see what happens. And that opened the door to, to massive weight loss relatively quickly. I think like 40 pounds came off in the first few months because, wow. because I also was still biking every day. And then I started finding that if I, you know, if I snuck out of the office and went to the gym for half an hour in the middle of the day, I could get some exercise in that way. I started fasting and all along the way, physically, the changes were happening, but I had no idea mentally how much I was going to change and how much, again, the lessons I was learning about being present, being in the now and, and just really focusing on what I could control and what was beyond my control. All of that came from exercise. It all came from physically moving my body to, uh, to, to sort of help deal with those demons that were just swirling, all the energy that was in my head, just swirling with negative information all the time. Just by moving my body more, that was being quieted because the energy just wasn't there to feed it. Yeah, um, so I love- it sort of worked in reverse for me. I love that. It's a great, I mean, great story. And I think there's a lot there. You know, I- often talk to my clients about, you know, the progressive nature of doing good things for yourself, you know? So when you feel crappy, you don't really want to do good things for yourself. But if you do one thing that feels good, like is self-caring, like going for a walk, going for a jog, going for a bike ride, whatever, you know, it kind of lifts your energy, right? You just get that little lift up. And then you just feel good enough that you consider doing something else that's good for you. And then you do that and then you feel better. You're, you know, you're walking with a little bit more of a spring in your step. You're noticing the colors in the world. And then you just, it just progressively turns into like, I want to do good for myself. Like I want to feel good and do positive things. So it really does build on itself. So I love that you described it that way. That's super cool. That's one of the things we talk about on, on the show all the time. It's just that it is just starting with one small little step because that one step leads to another one and leads to another one. And eventually you've walked a mile and then eventually you've run a 5k and then eventually, you know, you've made some other major life change because you took that first step. But, and, and Zach has to remind me all the time, don't, don't look at the 5k. Don't look at the marathon. You're never going to get there. Look at this yeah. first step because it is, it's, it can be so overwhelming when you think about all of the things you want to accomplish and how much weight you want to lose and how, how you want to feel. And those are great benchmarks, but you have to really focus on each level, each goal along the way to eventually get there because otherwise, you know, it's, it's the whole eating an ele eating an elephant analogy. You got to eat it one yeah. at a time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Were you guys um, both married when you had your shift to, to better health or, or um, did it come after? Uh, I was, I was married. Yes. It, I okay. was either married or we were married Almost like married. the year after. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and, I was and you well. too, Jeremy. Okay. Yeah. So question is how do your spouses like your progression to better health. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a, this is kind of a, a bit of a loaded question for me because while my wife is very, very supportive of where I am now, there were moments along the way, especially when I was quitting smoking, where the divorce papers were almost filed. Like, Oh, were you bitchy? I was so, <laughs> I, I, I threw a vacuum across the room because I, it fell over and like, it was, it was just really, really bad. Um, but that was the worst of it. But then later on, <clears throat> my wife has been very, very, very supportive and very loving of all of this stuff. But I got to a point in my self care where I kind of thought about it as, well, a little of this is good. A lot must be better. Oh, so what? I, you got obsessive? How could that ever I, be? I know. So I started doing, <laughs> I mean, like I was going to yoga two times a week and then hitting the gym and then going and getting a massage and then mm -hmm. going for acupuncture. Like I was just doing all the things. <laughs> and then at one point, my wife kind of pulled me aside and was like, okay, so you spent like 36 hours last week on we you. Counted them. That's painful. And I have been taking care of our daughter. And I haven't had any hours for myself. So mm. come back a little bit. So we, I scaled back and yeah, now, yeah, now yeah. We, we try and make sure that the other one's taking care of themselves too. Okay. But. Good. Good for you. Yeah. That sounded a little unbalanced. <laughs> Just slightly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So Jeremy, how about you? I think it's similar. Uh, there's one weekend in particular, I went on a, on a retreat and it, it's a whole other story, but it was a, a wellness based retreat. And it was, you know, an entire weekend to myself in a palatial resort in, you know, Southern California. 
And I mean, it was some deep work. I, I came out of two days of work feeling like I'd been in therapy for 20 years. It was incredible. And I came back with writing this high for like two months. And I mean, people were like, is he okay? Like, what is, <laughs> what is his, because I just came back with this, just like unbelievable confidence and like just riding yeah. this, this wave and, you know, which sounds awesome, but it also creates this massive ego that, you know, nothing else matters but me because all of a sudden I found my power and I stepped right into it and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Iron Man. And so, I mean, we, we were hanging out with people and they would say to her, like, is he, is he like, what's, a, what's his deal? Because I've, <laughs> I've battled depression my whole life and all of a sudden I'm Mr. Confidence. And so, uh, you know, but, but like Zach said, there's definitely, you can go way overboard. It can be, it can be your everything. And part of what I've learned and, and that I'm still learning, it's a very difficult thing to balance is, is how to still do those things and incorporate your family with them. So it's, it's less about, you know, how do I find time to go do yoga by myself? It's finding a way to go, Hey kids, come and do this with me. Let's do the kid version of the yoga video or whatever, so that we can do it together. Mm. I don't do it, you know, nearly enough. And, and, and I know that's part of uh, the demons that I still battle is, is trying to find that balance. Like where, where's the time for me? I, you know, I have to do more things for me, but I also have to do everything for everyone else. And so it's, it is a very difficult and, and muddy thing to try and put together in a way that, that you feel like you're balanced and taking care of yourself while still showing up for, for the people around you. Yeah. And I think if, if not, everybody's like, in, if never, not everybody drank the Kool-Aid, then, right. you know, there's going to some pe- could be some people that are like, you know, I'm not on board and I don't, I don't get it. And you're selfish, you know, you're selfish and self-indulgent and what's the point. So, so it is a hard thing, obviously to bring everybody along if they're not into it, like they're not, they don't feel the need for the self-care and they don't, you know, they don't understand what kind of what the craze is all about. So I'm sure that creates some tension. There's no question about it. And I have that. I mean, I meditate twice a day and thankfully my guy is super supportive and he knows I need to have my meditation and do. And so he's very accommodating, but I do much more self-care than he does, (laughs) you know? So there's the unbalance and I mean, you got to do what you got to do. And my experiences, especially, and he likes who I am by the way. So he always, he might get frustrated with all my self-care things that I do, but he also, he also quickly comes around to, oh yeah, I really like who you are. So keep doing whatever you're doing yeah. because I'm liking the results, you know? So that's always where we end up. But, um, but it is a, you know, when you're, especially, I think when you have the weight issue, you know, that never goes away. Like you're, my experience is you're an emotional eater for life and you don't have to act out with it. You don't have to ever succumb to it again. But you also have to be aware that it's a, a it's a thing and it, you could go back there if you stop doing your self-care, bottom mm-hmm. line. Like it's kind of a day to time, got to keep on the road. Could and yeah. do. You know, I mean, it, we're here, <laughs> right. we're a couple of weeks past uh, Halloween and uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say the Halloween candy uh, has, has not been visited every now and then in yeah. the last few weeks. The, you know, there's, there's just, there's stress all the time, especially these last couple of years. And and we've made some lifestyle changes here that have, that have sort of added some stress and and taken some away. And, and along the way, you know, something like that shows up at two bags of 600 pieces of candy. It's really hard to be like, oh no, I'm perfectly balanced and I don't need a third O Henry bar, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's going to be a lifelong battle. And every now and then I do just have to accept that, you know, this is just what I need right now. And as long as I don't do this for four five, six, nine days in a row, uh, you know, it, it's okay every now and then, but, but you do have to be careful about giving yourself those breaks because those breaks can turn into to bad habits too. No question. No question. Um, yeah. So can you, I'm very curious about what books you've read that have been super supportive for your journey. Like, and I don't mean nutrition books. I mean, kind of like going deeper books, like how to, how to get, cause especially Zach, it sounds like you had a really horrific childhood. So how did you start to grapple with that stuff and get more aware and sort it out, right? Mm-hmm. So that you could heal from it. Like what books were really important to you? Ooh, that's that's a big question. There's or so what books many. inspire yeah. you? Kind yeah. of just just kind of what books really have stood yeah. out. Maybe, maybe two of your favorite books. Let's go there. Yeah. So I think one of my number one favorite books is Mindset by Carol Dweck. Um, by whom? Carol Dweck. Okay. Um, I've not heard of it. 
uh, this is this is an, an amazing book. It talks about um, fixed mindset and growth mindset. Okay. And how fixed mindset you feel like you are you're wired the way you're going to be wired, and that's it forever. Whereas a growth mindset is I can change, I can do different things, I can get better. Um, and there was a whole there's a whole section of the book that talks about you know making sure that you have a growth mindset. But as a, as a father, there's a whole section on how to raise your child to have a growth mindset. Mm. And as I was reading this book, like I got it and I, it didn't click until I started reading about how to raise your child to have a growth mindset, because all of the examples of how to raise your child to have a fixed mindset were what my parents did to me, Mm -hmm. um, like talking down to me, telling me I was stupid, telling Mm. me I was fat, like my dad would always have you ever heard of the Bob's big boy restaurants in the South? Sure. So we'd, we would drive by those and my dad would would say, Zach, there's your, there's your restaurant. Oh, that's so so terrible. I'm so sorry. But that book was, was life-changing for me because it made me really realize that who I am right now is not who I'm going to be tomorrow or who I'm going to be in five years. And I can make these little changes and I can grow. So that, that was, that is, I've probably read it 20 times. Wow. It's an amazing book. I can't wait to read it. It sounds amazing. And then the other book that really, a little controversial, but um, The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. Okay. That book, well, I don't agree with everything that he said in the book. Mm -hmm. It was really just a great opportunity to, to say, huh, what if I did this? What if I did that and become curious about myself? So while I tried a few things in the book, you know, it was more of an, an exploration into my own body and going, huh, well, that doesn't work for me. I don't like that, but I'm going to try this other thing. So mm-hmm. it was that kind of built on the growth mindset of what, what can my body do tomorrow? What can it do five years from now? I love it. Thank you. Great stuff. How about you, Jeremy? Uh, a couple that have been uh, instrumental in my life and that I have on my bookshelf all the time. One is called Lost Connections. It's by Johan Hari, and it uh, is primarily about depression and the source of it for so many people, which is lost connections with other people that not really living your life and, and sort of following these paths that are sort of paved for you instead of pursuing them on your own. And in in that process, being disconnected from other people and and how even though you may be interacting with them, there's not a true connection. And so mm-hmm. without that, it can lead to a lot of depression. Um, so that was, there's tons of lessons in there, beautifully written and, and really well told story. Uh, aside from that, in terms of like personal development stuff, anything Ryan Holiday re- uh, writes, I will read. So uh, his, his newest one, uh, Courage, Courage is Calling, The Obstacle is the Way, Stillness is the Key. All of them uh, just drawing on the lessons of the Stoics and, and again, leaning into your fears, leaning into those obstacles, because those are where real growth happens, you know, trying, trying to always be comfortable and safe and not taking big risks and, and believing in yourself. All those things are how you just live a, a pretty normal life and you never really grow and, and, and get to know yourself and, and achieve the things that you want to achieve for yourself, even if you don't even know you want to achieve them yet. But by facing those fears, you can really develop a lot of self-confidence and a lot of strength to take on other challenges and pursue those other steps that we've been talking about, uh, those other small steps toward, toward better living. Great message. I love that. Thanks you guys. That's super yeah. cool. I love hearing some other perspectives on how to, how to grow, right? How to grow up, <laughs> how to grow. Right. Um, that's super cool. So what are, um, what, what would you say to somebody who's kind of where you were 20 years ago? Like, what would you say to somebody who really has, like, they've kind of had their dark night of the soul and they're just tired. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. They don't want to do it anymore. Um, you know, where you guys were at one time, where, what would you say to that person, man or woman? I would say two things. Um, one, really develop a sense of curiosity about yourself. If you want to change, you're going to have to be open to, to new things and trying different things and be okay with being bad at things because you will get better. And then secondly, you know, I didn't do this, 
but I do it now. Um, get a coach, whatever your goal is, whatever, whatever it is that you want to achieve, you don't have to do it alone. There are people that are willing to help you, you know, you know, drive you down the right road of that journey and get you there. But like that, that accountability, the, the safety factor, right? Because some of this stuff could be dangerous in whatever it is you're trying to change in your life, but just find a coach and be curious about yourself. I love that. So you clearly have had a coach. I do now. Mm -hmm. Um, when I started this whole journey, it was all on me and I wondered why I hurt myself all the time or, you know, didn't feel right eating the kind of kinds of foods that I was eating. Um, and once I actually started talking to people who were knowledgeable about food and what it does to certain people, and, um, even just a, a few months ago at the gym, I couldn't squat because I was having an issue with my knee and my coach made a slight correction, very, very small correction. And now I can squat again. So it's, you don't know what your blind spots are and having sure. that, that person to look and point them out to you is really important. It's really uncomfortable because you don't <laughs> necessarily want to know about those blind spots, but it's really important to know about them if you want to grow. Yeah, absolutely. I love that because I've always been coached. I mean, I, you know, I, I couldn't do it without the coaching. Cause I definitely, I know I have blind spots to this day, you know, but also I'm kind of lazy. And if I don't get you know, challenged in some way to become better, I'll rest on my laurels. And the bottom line is I'll miss some amazing opportunities, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't, I don't want to listen to my fear. I want to, I want to rise above my fear, but my fear talks to me, you know, the, the voice of fear, right. Uh, negativity, self-doubt. I mean, that's in there and it's in there from a very early age. So I need, voices that are louder than my head mm -hmm. to give me positive, uh, encouragement and challenges to become more. And when I do, and I pay for that and I, I'm, it's good money, you know, it's, it's good money, you know, spent, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a, it's a good investment, I guess is what I'm saying. It's, it's so worth it because then I become so much more than I would have ever been left up to my own devices. So I, mm -hmm. I really love that advice. It's awesome. How about you, Jeremy? I would echo what Zach said about curiosity. And uh, if coaching is something that's not in a budget, at least finding an accountability partner and, and someone who's more than just going to cheer you on, someone who's going to say, why are you falling down? What's, what's in the way? What can we do to, to get around it? So sometimes just even, even having a friend or an acquaintance who will be that person for you is huge. Uh, the, other, the thing I would say to myself, I think, uh, is two things. Is One is this is temporary. This is, this is a painful and dark time. You're you're at your lowest now, which means you're about to start climbing your way out. So, so be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself. Uh, the other thing I would say is everything you've been doing doesn't work. So it's time to try something else. And, and whether that is getting an accountability partner or talking to somebody who, who, is do, who is living the life that you want to live, stop hanging around with the people that are in the same mess as you. Seek out the people that are living the life that you want to live and hang out with them all the time. Find out what they're doing ask them what they're doing and do it all from, from a place of, of self acceptance, at least like you have to just start from I'm okay right now. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. So if you start from there, I think that the, the steps that you take only become positive, but if you start from, I hate myself and I'm sick of looking and feeling this way, all you do is, is keep acting with that sort of negative intention. And so if you can at least just get to a point where you just accept like, like, this is okay. This is, a, this is not a death sentence. This is not over today. I can do something different. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should listen to different podcasts. Maybe I should talk to different people, hang out with different, different crowds. But, but just accept that, that you're okay where you're at and th there is a better path forward. You just have to find it, which is not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but, but it is there. Love it. Oh, you guys are so wise. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> it's great stuff. I really, very nourishing information. Pardon the pun. Um, yeah, I really love that. And it all starts with a step, right? Yep. Like, like that small step forward, you know, towards self-love and self-care. So, so important. I love that you both echoed not doing it alone, you know, cause it's just, that's so important. I mean, we have 
other people on this planet for a reason, you know, we're here to support each other and yeah. help ourselves become mm-hmm. better. So love it, love it, love it. Well, you guys are so awesome. So the cool thing is for anybody who's listening, you can get more of this by going to these guys, uh, podcast. So tell us your podcast. Uh, yeah, it's called The Fit Mess. Uh, it's Zach and I having conversations much like this one. We did a great episode with you just a, a few weeks ago and uh, getting lots of great results from that. But we do, we just we just sort of share things that either do work for us that, that we've tried or that maybe don't work for us, but seem like they are, are a good tool that somebody else might be able to benefit from. And uh, really just sort of sharing in the struggle that it is uh, to try and live a happier, healthier life. It's not easy. No part of this is easy. It is, it is by far a much harder choice than to just continue to sort of uh, wait for good things to happen or, or expect that you're going to win the lottery or whatever it is. This is a much harder path to go down, but I, I would argue a much more rewarding one. And so that's, I think the message that we try and share with people is that they're not alone in this. And, and I think that either we can help them or the people that we introduce to them can help them. I love that. You know, my mentor used to say to me, you know what, you know what happens in a garden? You know what hap- just happens in a garden? Weeds. Right, right. <laughs> uh, you don't you don't have to do a damn thing to get weeds. If you want anything over and above weeds, you're going to have to do some gardening. So, I like to end the show uh with two, well, in this case two questions, but it's the same question to both of you. <laughs> so, one question, two answers. What is your deepest hunger? This being the Heal Your Hunger show. Hmm. As in a good hunger or a bad hunger? <laughs> well, your truth, <laughs> your truth hunger, yeah. the true, the, your true hunger. My true hunger. And I will, this actually goes back to the, when I, sorry, this is a little bit long-winded. It's okay. <laughs> I did a three-day fast just because I wanted to see what would happen. And on the second day, when I went to bed, I went to bed hungry and I had this, this, this realization that I was going to bed hungry because I chose to do so. And not everyone chooses to go to, go to bed hungry. So it really kind of lit a fire for me to, you know, the show is an example of it, but just really give back to the community and help people, you know, elevate themselves out of wherever they are, if it's a struggle for them. So that is my hunger is to help people as much as I can in any way I can um, around the areas that I've got some kind of expertise in. Beautiful. I love it. How about you, Jeremy? Well, now I'm going to sound selfish. Thanks, Zach. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Anything goes, anything goes. I think the way that I could sum it up best is just, I, I hunger to be seen. I I hunger to see myself the way other people see me Mm. because everything I hear from them is not is not the voice that I hear in my head and it's not the person I see in the mirror. So I would like to someday fully and completely and for the long term, uh, see myself the way others see me. That's not selfish at all. That's like, <laughs> that will be, you know, uh, it, being more self-realized, right. Where we yeah. see ourselves clearly, that's, that will only enhance the gifts we have to give in the world. Mm -hmm. I believe. So beautiful. I love it. You guys, thank you so much. This has been very soul nourishing. So thank you and keep doing your amazing work in the world. And everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events and more, visit healyourhunger.com.